What up, leaguers? Welcome to the Spectacular Spoiler League. I'm the Pandan Superman, the mayor of Hype City, Hazy Roman. As always, I'm joined by the God of Night, the Prime Minister of Post Production, Deep Voice. And today, today we're in the Hall of Spoilers for another edition of the Weekly One Shot. This week, we're talking about Arrow, we're talking about Black Lightning, we're talking about Krypton, and we're talking about Legends of Tomorrow. We're switching up, up. We're switching it up a little bit this week. Usually we do like a top five power rankings, a top three bum asses. This week, bum asses galore, everybody. <laughs> so it's gonna be a top three power rankings this week and a top five bum asses this week. People about to get roasted, deep boys. It's about. <laughs> it is no we, holds bar this week, my man. Yeah, we had to leave a number of people <laughs> off, but like you said, they're gonna we're gonna put them up on the Spitfire. The the, the I don't even know what it's called. We're gonna we're gonna roast them. We're Let's gonna leave roast it at that. I'm not gonna we're get gonna all complicated. Them. We're gonna light up that kerosene. That kerosene. That kerosene. I, like I like the way you pronounce that. That kerosene. They're about to get roasted, cooked, rotisserie. Actually, because Ro- we take we like to take there our you go. time here. <laughs> all right, man. So yeah. start us off with number three, man. Who we starting off this week? Number three, power rankings. Starting off, yes, yeah. because yeah. it's gonna be a lot of a lot of hest, a lot of roasting. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> number oh, yeah. three is actually someone that was in this episode of Arrow for two minutes, a minute and a half. <laughs> he was barely in the episode, at the beginning of the episode, and that's Malcolm Merlin. Yes. And number three, uh, more so because of the the what he contributed story-wise into the Arrowverse universe or to the Arrow <laughs> mythos, because apparently in this episode, he found or was looking for uh more Lazarus pits because if you remember uh, about two three seasons ago when they yeah. brought in Constantine uh because Sarah Lance was dipped into the uh or she died and then they dipped her into the Lazarus pit and they had to kind of just end it they had to you know destroy it. I don't even know what it was that they did it's like they threw a bath bomb in there that just destroyed the whole thing and that was we for we thought that was the end of the Lazarus pit. We thought that there yeah. were there were no more. But as we know in the DC universe, there's always small Lazarus pits. They're always out there. And apparently Malcolm Merlin, uh, you know, the little time that he had as uh, the demon's head, as as uh, the head of the League of, of Assassins or the League of Shadows. I, I know mm-hmm. they keep switching the names, but he was on a journey. I think and League was, of Assassins is what they're going with now. League of Assassins, and uh, he was able to find three Lazarus pits out in the world. Uh, I didn't really get to peep where they were on the map. I think they showed it on the map, or did they not? On the I don't know where they are, man. I didn't even look that close, because I'll be honest with you, dude. This hour, this episode of Hour was boring. Yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. like, yeah. I, it's, I feel bad, because for all intents and purposes, it had all the things I would have loved. Like, mm-hmm. it had Nissa Al Ghul, mm-hmm. Roy Harper, mm-hmm. Thea back in the suit. And Roy Harper, shout out to Roy Harper, he was like, he was low key rocking the the uh, Arsenal comics outfit a little bit, you know. He had the, the trucker hat. the hours on the back, but he had the the, the hat, you know, rolling on the, on deck. But this episode of Arrow just kind of felt boring, like. And it we're gonna was... talk about that a little bit later, but yeah, I was like Lester, man, personally. It's saying something that someone that was barely in this episode <laughs> made our power rankings. Yeah, this that's pretty much. Episode was. I don't know. Yeah. We were talking to each other, and you were just like. Was it me or because or, I was this boring? Because I was spending my time on the phone and I was like, that's yeah. exactly what I was doing. Yo, I was, I was, I was legit just chilling difficult. on my phone. And, and like for me, I, I, I got into it late. Mm. You know, I was I was doing something else. So I, I left it on recording, you know, and I can fast yeah. forward to the commercials. And still, even then, it was just bland and dry. I could imagine someone sitting there for the whole hour watching that so, episode. I guess the question I have is, like, why was it so dry? Like, what made it so dry? I mean, what, in your opinion, made it, like, kind of boring? Because I, I agree with you, man. Like, I was, I haven't been that bored watching an Arrow episode in a long time, man. Yeah. Something about it felt out of place. Like, I like the idea of the Lazarus pits. I like the idea of the them, like, you know, some people, like, kind of cut, kind of cut out the Arrowverse for, like, messing with death a little bit too much. But, like, I like the concept of the idea that everybody could come back because... We know the Lazarus pit, the Lazarus pit really messes people up. So I sort of like that idea, but there's something about this episode that's boring, man. I don't know what it was, man. You know, you helped me out because I'm, I'm, I'm honestly at a loss. I'm honestly at a loss. 
again, my my guess is because they have to fill in like twenty something episodes. This was supposed to be just like a side story. I don't know if it'll come back because this is a pretty big thing, you know, to have Lazarus Pitts and call it back to Malcolm Merlin, League of Assassins. But it was just a, a Thea episode. And Thea hasn't really been a part of anything in a while. So it's just like, are we really supposed to be all that interested and excited over something that is loosely based on this character? That's um, a good point. And it's a good point. I don't know. Just the, I don't know. The pacing fell off, f- felt off. Um, there, there was at no point was I just interested in what was going on. I, I even sure. had difficulty following what was going on at times. Yes. And then definitely. when it, when it kind of all culminated, I thought to myself, they didn't need to spend a whole episode on this. Mm. Like it, they, they could have really compressed it into like 15 minutes. It could have been like its own side thing because, uh, mm. you know, that's usually what he do on the shows. But instead, the side thing in this episode was Curtis finding a new date. And I was like, I don't really care about that either. I, I mean, <laughs> that whole side plot with like with Dinah and Curtis, I was just like, eh, like yes. I didn't really need it, man. Yeah. I, every time they came back on, I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. They're on the show. <laughs> they're in this episode which i think goes to show you that you know we've been saying this all season long we've been saying this for a while and i think it goes to show that like something with these shows there needs to be like a cut there needs to be maybe something taken away i don't know something that gives us a little bit less in terms of the character so that we can focus on some of the storylines for the characters we do got um, or at least maybe rotate it a little bit better. Like, damn, like, <laughs> I don't know, like something. You know what I mean? But yeah, I think C... No, go ahead. I, I think CB2198 kind of had it, like, kind of hit the nail on the head there when he talked about this episode. It's like, almost nothing in this episode had anything to do with the season. And we're already struggling with the storyline of the season, especially with Richard Dragon, who feels... It's like nowhere doing nothing. And it's just like... yeah. You, w- we're more than halfway through the season. This guy, like, what is the point of this character? Yeah, it feels like here. it feels like this season's a little like this season is weird because I don't think it's bad for lack of ideas. Mm-hmm. I think just it just keeps shifting in a way that it's like they don't know what they want. They don't know what they want to do. Like I like the idea of them having like a dark team to go against, right? Where they had like Caden James and Anatoly and you know uh, Siren and you know uh, all these other people, but then like. I just felt like it never culminated in a way that actually meant something. It never actually came to fruition. It was sort of like a waste. While, like, initially the idea, the notion of it, I think, almost, like, to me, it was like, oh, it feels like a natural progression of things. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, it just, I don't know. I mean, just, it just didn't work out. Thank you for the compliments on the hat, by the way, everybody. Everybody's like, <laughs> Jason hat. Todd over here. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. But, I mean, just compare where Arrow was last season at this point to where it is True. now. And I mean, um, I mean, I'm blanking on the villain's name, uh, but he was one of the best that we've seen. Prometheus. Prometheus. Uh, yeah. it, it was he was a threat. And he was interesting throughout. And then you yeah. know this was a filler episode, and it had like its own side villain. More on her later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, Malcolm Merlin. I like the idea of Lazarus Pit coming back. I like, you know, the the idea of that being something that comes 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 through. I like the idea that. There's like he started off a little bit of a shadow group, but I don't know. Something with Arrow, man, is is lacking. And there was a while where I was like, Arrow is dope. And then slowly but surely, it was like, Arrow's not so dope. (laughs) Arrow's not so dope, man. But let's move on. Let's move on to another character, man. Let's move on to number two for this week. And it's a double whammy, two characters. And that is, they are, I should say, Black Lightning and Thunder. Holding it down this week over on Black Lightning. I mean, honestly, I'm not sure I've seen like a duo work as well in the Arrowverse as well as they've been making them work early on. Like, I'm not sure. Maybe you could, you know, maybe that you could offer up some duo from the the shows we've seen thus far. But the fight scenes, the choreography for like Black Lightning and Thunder when they're working together is pretty cool. Like how he's like, you know, hiding behind her and like, you know, she'll. You know, she'll shield him from bullets and then he'll pop out. You know, he's throwing lightning bolts and whatnot. And I just felt like their synergy, man, in the episode is phenomenal. I love the way they work together. And I think it, it really uh, it really shows that, like, Black Lightning has sort of been on another level compared to the other Hourverse shows this season. And correct me if I'm wrong, man. I don't, I don't know if you agree or not. 
Yeah, I mean, it, you know, the, the stakes seem much more important and higher. I mean, obviously, it's a more personal story, but there are consequences to everything that happens. And I guess maybe, again, in comparison to Arrow, just never feel like there's any consequence or any type of importance to the things that happen. It's just things happen. It's like, well, that was the episode and that's that. But in Black Lightning, oh, right. things happen, people die. People yeah. change. Someone gets paralyzed. Someone gets powers. You know, uh, there's a new revelation. Gamby gets waterboarded. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Gamby got owned this week. Good Lord. <laughs> I Good mean, Lord. I, Gamby got got this week, man. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> One of the consequences of this episode is uh, whatever shady government organization uh, that is the out ASA. there, the ASA, they're on Black Lightning's ass now. And they're going to be on his family's ass now. And they had to move. Yeah. Yeah. The more they went out there fighting crime, you know, doing what was right, the worse it's going to get. And and you're probably going to see that out, you know, affect characters like Ganessa who was like very gung-ho about, you know, being a vigilante, which is fine. Definitely. You know, I mean, obviously that's commendable, but there are real-world consequences to being a hero. And then you have, you know, her sister who's kind of the foil uh to that sentiment who uh, whether you know, I guess she doesn't fully realize it either. But she's like, "What about just living a normal life? Like, I don't really want to be doing this." Uh, and then again, that's kind of the clash that Black Lightning and his wife initially had. His wife yeah. wanted to build a home. Black Lightning wanted to be Black Lightning, and Black Lightning almost died. Yeah, that's why Black yeah. Lightning is back to keep reminding you every episode because <laughs> he almost died. Yeah. I don't. One thing I will say about Black Lightning, though, yeah, and. You know, I think they're balancing the family dynamic well. I was a little bit annoyed with with Jennifer Pierce a little bit with her sort of whining and, you know, sulking. But, you know, I, I, I understand it. Like, I think it's a good contrast to have Thunder be this enthusiastic character who never doubts the idea that she's a hero. And then have Jennifer sort of be like, yo, I don't want this. Like, I really and truly, this is not cool. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I like that. But I have, I'm sort of having an issue with Black Lightning. I like the idea of the ASA and what they're doing and, and, and they're being super powered uh, characters out there. That, I think, is a cool element hmm. um, because I feel like what this, this pre-green light experiment is sort of like, a, it's sort of like the particle accelerator for, the, for Black Lightning, a way to introduce people with more powers. But I'm having an issue with the villains here Yeah. because, first of all, Tobias Will, when his sister got, his sister got on, she died. Mm-hmm. And he disappeared. And that's not what we need for Tobias Will. And, you know, people in chat, I see, you know, them, them sort of pointing out the same thing. Like, Tobias Will sort of needs the build. He doesn't need to be off screen. Yeah. Because Tobias Will hasn't been that great of a villain. Mm-hmm. Then you have Lala, you know, and, they, and they're, they're sort of uh, preparing for him to be, uh, I guess, maybe in, in an adversarial relationship with Tobias Will. I'm just like, uh, guys, who am I supposed to be? Who are we following here? <laughs> yeah. Like I don't, I don't find any one of these villains like compelling. He, here's what I think the issue might be. Um, again, Black Lightning tries to ground itself, mm. and whenever someone does something, there are consequences. But then, yeah, the villains are thrown for a loop because you know you generally want a villain to be in control, to be the one pulling mm-hmm. the strings. But these villains, like some, like Tobias Whale, is being affected just as much by what he does as any of the other characters are. Like, he's not invincible. Mm. You know what I mean? He can't sure. just, like, sure. start killing people and then it's like, oh, well, I'm going to go back to business. I'm going to just chill mm. where I'm at or, or, you know, disrupt the order of whatever evil cabal he's a part of and just right. chill and just stay there. You know, obviously his sister okay. died uh, and, and, you know, Lala, something, whatever happened to Lala, he's back, he's dead, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think they're leading to to Lala being like one of those kids who probably got you know powers mm-hmm. like uh, Black Lightning did. It's just that it took him dying to sort of for for those powers to sort of kick in. My my thought is that, and this is just a random theory. Like I have no idea if this is this is going to be the case for his power set. Mm-hmm. But my thought is that he basically draws on the souls of the people he kills. So he gets lives basically mm-hmm. that he can use. Based on the people he kills. So, like, let's say he kills a person. That gives him, like, another life that he can sort of draw from if he were to die. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it was also pretty interesting that it seemed like his he was affecting, like, he was increasing his luck almost. Because somebody shot at him this episode and the gun jammed, like, like three times or misfired, like, three times or something like that. Mm-hmm. And it seemed like he's, I don't know, maybe he has the power to affect luck or whatever. But I don't know. Something Something's interesting going on with him. But once again, I feel lost, dude. Like, I feel... 
yeah, something I mean, about I, the villains. I agree. It's it's going to be tough because I mean we think of the ASA and it's like, do we want a, a faceless government organization? Is that what we really want? Because I, I don't know. No. I kind of want like and a that, charismatic villain, a character, so someone to to be interested in. And, and that ASA stooge is not that dude. That guy's whack, bro. Like. Not enough to be a bum ass, but he ain't exactly intriguing, bro. My man is out here just like, yeah, can't be your good Peter. You're going to tell us what I need to know. Yeah. Let's see how tough you really are. It's just like cliche line after cliche <laughs> line. You know, Predator Magnus is pointing out they got the ASA, they got the 100, they got, you know, uh, Tobias Will out here, who's, yeah. a, you know, sort of weaves into that. They've got Lala out here. I'm just kind of like, I don't know. I don't know who to follow as a villain. Like, like, I'm interested in the mystery, the overall mystery, mm-hmm. you know, that Gammy's a part of. And I think they're weaving that tale very nicely. Mm-hmm. It's just that there's, I feel like there's no definitive face yeah. to villainy. And that, I, and that, I agree. Is, it's, it's, I, it's hurting a little bit. I'm it's just, hurting me a little I'm bit. I'm just wondering, because generally, you know, we always have suggestions. But with this one, I'm at a loss. I'm just like, what, what can they do exactly? I don't know what. It's too late for the season, but yeah. they need to. Tobias Will needs to come back ASAP. They need to stop being playing coy with Lala and weave him back into the story. He's probably, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's one of those kids from back in the day. Because he seems to be, well, I was going to say I thought he was like Black Lightning's age. But I don't think he's Jefferson Pierce's age. I think he might be younger than him. So maybe, yeah. I don't know, maybe yeah. maybe scratch that. I, but. Think, I think he was a teacher. He, he was his teacher when he was in high school. I think they mentioned that. Oh, yeah, they did. They did. But we saw that kid get powers. That kid that was doing green light. We saw her manifest powers. Yeah. And who's to say that, you know, I don't know, Lala's dad didn't, you know, take the same thing that they were, that the ASA was putting out there. And Lala sort of has a gene for powers also and inherited that. Like, I don't know. But I, I'm thinking he's tied into that somehow. Uh, did I? Did Lady Eve bring him back? Wasn't she? No. I think she was like embalming people and those people were coming back to life or something. I don't remember if people were coming back to life based on her embalming them. I don't know about that. I know she was embalming certain people i just remember lala just popping up in like a hotel room i mean you know maybe somebody in the chat could help us out with that i don't know if if that happened but once again like that's just sort of like because they said lady eve and she's dead that's what i'm saying like that like whatever she was doing i feel like just sort of got left behind and maybe we just have to be patient but while black lightning is good and enjoyable because i think i think the cast is great Mm -hmm. like Lala's actor, I think, is is good. Like I like him. I, he's solid. He's 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 unsettling. Mm-hmm. To, to and I dare say he's more unsettling than the actor playing Tobias Will. Yeah, I dare say Lala is a little bit more compelling. I and him, you know, sort of, you know, being a little bit crazy right now, you know, hallucinating and stuff like that. Like Tobias Will, I just find that he's just growling between his teeth and just getting <laughs> mad and twisting up his face and. Black Lightning gotta go. Like, like he made you know, he, just, he made a decent impression at first because we saw a little yes. bit of him, but then as we started seeing more, it's like this guy is he from like a 1970s comic or something like that? <laughs> yo, right? He just didn't build, yo. There was just no build from that point, man. But you know, like I said, Black Lightning and Thunder doing it up, man. Deep Boys hit us with number one for the re- the week, numero uno. Who kicked it off the best this week in the weekly one shot, man? Number one is Lida Zod. Lida, mm. Lida. We haven't even decided on how. You know. <laughs> I'm, I'm going with Lida Zod. Lida with Lida Zod. Lida Zod. Uh, yeah. Obviously, uh, the the girlfriend or or the jump off of Segel, the main character in Krypton. The jump off. <laughs> wow, I didn't know they used that terminology on Krypton. <laughs> I think Adam Strange. Like, hello, is, this is, is hello, this is my jump off, Light is odd. <laughs> She's from the military guild. I've been smashing and dashing, if you know what I mean. I've been rat a tap tapping that ass. <laughs> but I'll the say... House of L has been getting sexual, if you know what I mean. <laughs> you know. <laughs> um. But no, I think she kind of shot up to being probably my favorite character on this show. Mm. From, just from this one episode where she, she saw what was going on. She wasn't feeling it at all. She's ride or die. She was like, I got to protect it. This is my boy. This is this is, this is Segel. Uh, you know, we got something going on. And she challenged mm. this guy to a duel. Uh, this, yes. this 
the the leader of the Sagittarii. Sag- Sagittarius. That was a hot scene, by the way. It was Sagittari- the Sagittari- Sagittarii. Sagittarii. Sag- just say the military. Just a, just a, <laughs> a group of military people, man. All these terminology. They were dropping mad terminology in Krypton. I was like, yo, I'm here for it. Like, I like the fact you trying to make me immersed in the culture, mm-hmm. but I'm not repeating any of this. <laughs> Sagittarii, Sagittarius, Sagittarii. I don't know. It's because I think it's Sagittarii, man. It sounds better because they I'm have a British with. accent. It does. We, it we sounds just... a lot better. Everything sounds better because they have British <laughs> accent. Man. Let's just let's just be honest. Some people are like, "Oh, why do Kryptonians have British accents?" I'm like, I think the the idea was to to like cast them as like whenever you see something with the ancient portrayal, like like ancient origins or like the past, they always use British accents. Like they'll do a movie about like ancient Greece and the person will have a British accent. They'll do an accent. They'll be a movie about like ancient, ancient Egypt and they'll have like Greek, uh, British accents. I don't know. But I also think it, it contrasts well to Adam Strange's accent, which is like definitively American. But you know what I mean, so we did get Black Panther and everyone had African accents. True. And it was pretty true. Good. True. That's a good movie. Love Black Panther. That was phenomenal, man. I'll just say. But, but back light on is odd. Light is odd. Uh, Hold it down. She challenged your boy to a duel. And yeah, she was getting spanked up a little bit. Oh, she was getting her ass beat. She, she was, she, she was like straight up. <laughs> she got a few he was concussions that in that fight. Yeah. It's like when, she, when her head slammed up against that cement wall, I was like, ah, like that. I felt that. Yeah. I felt that. But she 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 turned it up. You know, we, we definitely want to see Georgina Campbell treated like that. Definitely. No, definitely not. <laughs> she must be protected at all costs. <laughs> but uh, she she came on top at the end, victorious, and she beat this guy's ass. And he he called for <laughs> mercy. He was looking up at mm. her, the beautiful almond eyes. He was like, "Mercy!" Nah. And she was like, "Nah." I, I, she was like, "Nah, man." She, she looked over to her right. Zack Snyder was there. Zack Snyder was like, "Do it." <laughs> Zack Snyder was like. <laughs> And Same she, thing he did to the DCU. He was like, oh. <laughs> and then he hit the flush on the toilet. But yes, sir. <laughs> but nah, she killed the guy, and and that was a pretty badass fight scene. Lead up to that fight scene, uh, now she's the general, basically of the elite guard of of the uh, the voice of Rao. Mm. Uh, and, and she's in a, a position not only to, I guess, you know, obviously that's some career advancement right there, if I, you know, uh, uh, in my opinion. But she's also there in a better position to look out for Sagal as well. Yeah. There, there's some nonsense going on and she's aware of it. We're aware of it. Sag is becoming more aware of it. Adam Strange is aware of it. Uh, and yeah, she's number one on the power rankings for that. Power yeah, move. I, power number one power ranking for making those power moves. There you go, man. I mean, I think the the most compelling thing about her is one, we know of, that she's like definitely up the Zod line, and like you, you kind of talked to me about this before we got together. Yeah. You know, she snapped that guy's neck, sort of like how you know, uh, uh, Superman snapped Zod's neck in Man of Steel. So you know, it was a little bit of a homage, homage there to, to show you the ruthlessness of the Zod line. Because not only did she, she was getting her ass beat, yeah, but she, the way she kind of like stepped up and and took over the fight, it showed the ruthlessness of the Zod clan. Mm-hmm. And we saw that with her mother, you know, sort of, you know, the first episode where her mother was like, yo, you know, you, I'm going to beat your ass even though you're my daughter. I'm going to beat your ass in front of all these people. And I'm going to show you that, yo, the, the Zod clan, Sagittar, we're about being warriors. And I think this is sort of establishing the, the too. yeah, stabbed her in the hand, right? I think it's it's establishing the ruthlessness of the Zod clan. And to be honest with you, the relationship with her, between her and her mother, to to me is more interesting than like Segel. To be honest with you, I, I think it's I think it's I dare say that she's been more interesting than Segel thus far. So I mean, I'm I'm interested to see. They're still sort of setting up what the moves and machinations are going to be because obviously you're seeing three spheres of sort of. Uh, influence on krypton that are going to be playing against each other right you've got the religious aspect with the vex family and what they're plotting you know them trying to take out take down uh you know whatever uh valo was was working on right you've got you know uh segel and you know i guess we're probably going to see him jump more into the scientific uh guild or the science guild and seeing how they interact and then you've got the military guild with the zod family sort of interacting with each other and this is something that they've teased with Krypton from before. They were releasing, they were releasing poster images teasing, you know, each family that would be pivotal, uh, you know, 
in this this show. So I think that that's actually coming in to be something that could be cool. Like to see them sort of, they're going to be working against each other and for each other. And it's going to be interesting to see who draws, uh, who makes alliances where. Because you, you you might be quick to say, all right, well, maybe Light as I will be on Seg outside. But what happens when something divides them? Because I feel like, the you know, uh, Nissa Vex, I feel like she's working on Seg out and she might honestly earn her trust. And that could distance Light as I. And thus distance Segal from the support of the military. You know, so it, I, I like the machinations that they're setting up there. And I think it could be interesting. Yeah. Um, also, forgot also to, the looming. Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead, man. Go no, ahead. I also forgot to mention that I, I think one of the major catalysts for that episode um, was the fact that they were going to do like a raid of the, mm. the, the what were they called? The rankless, I think they were called? or, or The rankless. Yeah, yeah the ba- rankless. basically people that, the, the poor. The poor people that have like no family name, uh, yeah. or no status in this society, uh, right. in, in the efforts of you know gaining a lead on Black Zero, uh, because they mm. feel that the rankless help out or, or hide or, or may even have members of Black Zero among their um, amongst them, and right. you know Lada's was speaking with her brother. Her brother was like, "Yeah, I don't give a damn." You know, well, oh, that's not a brother. That's her love interest. That's what I thought. That was a brother. Nah, that's her. That's her betrothed, man. Oh, yeah. They're supposed to. They're supposed to be joined, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think his name is Dex something. <laughs> uh, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know. Right now, he's just he's just he's just he's just brolic fiance guy, basically. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that's his. That's that's wow. Well, there's definitely a quad a quad drangle. A square love thing going on, not a triangle, not a love triangle, but a love square or a love quadrangle uh, with him, uh, Nissa um, from the Vex line, Light is Odd, and Segel. So that's definitely supposed to be uh, her fiance. Yeah. <laughs> My man said her brother. More... Wait, wait. I thought that was her what brother. What is you doing, baby? <laughs> I honestly thought that was her brother the whole time. Damn, that would have made things a little weird, man. That would have I... made Krypton some ancestral. The thing Red is, I, I didn't, I didn't there, see, dude. I didn't see any type of infection. Like, I didn't see any anything to indicate. I, I mean, it's, I may, I'm probably, I obviously missed a line or something at some point. Yeah, you, you missed something there, man. <laughs> but you they, missed they, the DNA test, my friend. <laughs> they, they don't, they don't seem. Uh, again, it, it's just, I guess, the way they do things over there. They're not like in love. <laughs> they have to be married because they're. It's all like planned and ordained. But yes. Yeah. Superhero 2.0 says, "Should I watch Krypton? It is worth your time. It's worth the it's worth the try right now. It's very early on. It's taking a while to get its footing, but I think it's going to be ten episodes. I would say give it a shot personally. But Deep Boys, man, yes, lot is out of number one for stepping up. Let's move on over to the bum asses. We got five bum asses to go through <laughs> and five bum asses to slander this week, All man. Right. All right, let's start off with number five. I'm gonna hit you with number five, and we're talking about the microwave throwing lady from Black Lightning, man." <laughs> Y'all, this lady, Black Lightning got a bounty on his head. And we got this random lady in the hood trying to drop microwaves and all types. She's throwing appliances out her window, trying to drop it on Black Lightning as he talks to uh two bits, one of the guys in the neighborhood. And I'm like, yo, you over here trying to get this bounty, my lady, and you're you're literally wasting <laughs> money by throwing all your stuff. I don't even know if it was a microwave she threw, but she threw she was throwing some appliances she, she threw and something. missing wildly. Yeah. But she played two bits hard, man. Cause two bits was like, "Hey, what's your name?" He was trying to holler, and she was like, "Electricity, <laughs> rent." She was like, "Yo, can you pay my bills? Can you pay my telephone bills?" I was like, "Damn, that was the OD swerve, man." She was like, <laughs> "Imagine you ask, you trying to holler at a girl. You're like, hey, what's your name?'" She's like, "Rent, cell phone bills, electricity." Like, damn, yo, <laughs> can I just holler? Can I just? It comes. It's part of the package. <laughs> She was like, yo, she, saw, she started dropping the bills for him. I was like, damn, that's cold-blooded. <laughs> but she a bum-ass for throwing all those random appliances at Black Lightning, man, wasting her damn money. Ain't getting no bounty, and now she got to pay all them damn bills, and she got to buy all that new stuff she threw out the window, man. Yeah. That's a waste. Totally agree. That's a waste, man. Deep voice, man. That's me. Who you got at number four? Uh, number four, character by the name of Cara Fowdy. Mm. Also from Black Lightning. I mean, we were slandering uh, Gamby 
for quite some time because he was doing <laughs> yeah. he, was, he was doing something behind the scenes. But he got his scenes. ass beat this week. We had to we had to spare him. Man. Yeah. <laughs> We, My man was getting beat. He, like, Mortal Kombat <laughs> Armageddon got beat at the box office, man. <laughs> if you guys remember, James Raymar actually played Raiden in uh, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, I think it was, or Annihilation. Yeah. Annihilation, man. Damn. Annihilation, yeah, He's man. out here in front like he wasn't there front row center. Well, no, I mean, you Kombat were there front row center, actually. <laughs> if I recall this story correctly. I went correctly, to see the first one. Me, I was I was getting along fine as a as a young child, not wasting my money on trash. Out there with his no, never never went to to see that movie. (laughs) Don't have that revenge history, man. He had a silver sweater that he cut everything (laughs) off and just left the arms because he wanted to come in as (laughs) Jax. I will go back in time and, and, and pull your ass out of theater, man. Take a picture and come back to present day to make sure that this story is not verified that way. Anyway, Cara Fowdy on Black Lightning, man. The vice principal out here mm-hmm. literally selling kids out to the ASA. I'm like, girl, you fine. But, man, that is some vile stuff right there, man. That is vile. Like, that's the lowest thing you can do is sell out kids, my man. Mm. Just watching them get addicted to the green light and just selling them out to the ASA. I like that twist, though. Yeah, that was I didn't see that coming. That was interesting. And again, kind of taking a character that we didn't think was anything and, and making her a lot more interesting, making her into something pivotal to to the plot of the uh, of the show. Right, because uh, I thought they were just gonna make her like a secondary love interest for Jefferson Pierce. To be honest. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking that too. I mean, I guess mm. you were kind of thinking you were like, damn. Maybe if only I had substituted myself in there, Jefferson, <laughs> Jefferson Pierce's place. <laughs> I was like, Dad, I should have auditioned for the role of Black Lightning. Because my man got two fine women <laughs> vying for his attention. And it seemed like she, it seems like, you know, that could still happen. Because it seems like she was vying for the attention of Jefferson Pierce for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And sort of, you know, being a little bit flirty with him. And I think she was, while she is vile and traitorous, I think she was genuinely surprised that to hear that he was Black Lightning. Yeah. So I think she was genuinely like, damn, like, I'm in trouble because I could tell he's a good dude, but I got to do my job. I don't know if she's an agent or what. I guess she's an agent. Yeah. She's a spotter, like Gamby was saying. So I mean, she's, getting, you know, she's probably I, getting paid well. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably getting paid well to sell out kids, man. That's the, like that's the worst thing you could do, man. You a vice principal and you out here selling kids out, man. Kids getting kidnapped, like people out here losing their children. How could you do that, man? Man, she a bum ass for that, man. Deep boys, hit them with number three again, man. Because I want to let you take over this one, man. Because because I can't even say this whack ass character's name right now, man. Go ahead. Number, say number three, three is one of the members of the bum ass. Mount Rushmore. Hall of Fame! He, he's part of the, the Mount Rushmore of bum asses in the Arrowverse, mm. and that's Citizen Bumass. <laughs> <laughs> Making yet another appearance. Either he's on the list of bum asses, or we gotta just call him out for some bum assery. Uh, but in this one, I mean, listen, your boy got played by Kuwasa. Kuwasa! A, a woman that has tried to kill him at least twice this season. That word, man. And it, like, transform into water and go up his nose. <laughs> Drowning this man. And Not only that, but she could rust his ass because he's steel word. and she's water. So she's doubly dangerous, man. <laughs> right? Maybe, he, you know maybe he's stainless steel. I don't think stainless steel really rusts like that. But this is steel... Out here, listen. Stainless steel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised that's not his name. I'm surprised he didn't name himself that. Like, him and Ray would probably call him that. Like, what would be a perfect name? <laughs> Stainless steel. I like that name, man. And <laughs> and I like, I like, uh, I like what Doctor Strange Love said. I forget. I always forget this name. We got to start calling people that make the bum ass list frequently the Legion of Bum Asses. <laughs> <laughs> this is still is on the Legion of Bum Asses, y'all. He, Easily, he's on bro. The Legion of Bum Asses. I mean, but he's he's out here making deals with Kawasa, man. Like, bro, what is you doing, man? And he's surprised. He's surprised when he gets um, uh, betrayed. You know, I cut mm. Wally some slack because he's new to the team. Yeah, but Wally's. As much of a of an idiot, <laughs> Citizen Steel for getting tricked, 
Um, but yeah, and he's he spent and there's something else about him being captured that we'll talk about. I'll talk about later because this doesn't really make the whole bum ass list, but it's actually I'll talk about it now. What's going on with Damian Dark? I did not he was a completely different person in this episode. You know, we I feel like we missed an episode somewhere in here because Malice is apparently taking over his daughter. Yeah. And that's now bothering him. It's like, bro, you didn't realize this was gonna happen before? You sold your, your daughter's soul to this freaking guy Malice, and now she's changing, and now you're having regrets. Like sometimes Damian Dark is 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 funny and interesting, but sometimes he's just dumb. <laughs> and that was like we real talk. He should get a bum ass slot for this week. We're gonna put Citizen Little slash Damian Dark together because they were in that scene together doing that like whack ass interrogation or whatever that was yeah. supposed to be. But Damien Dark, you're right. Damien Dark, we're gonna we're gonna call an audible here. Audible, audible, audible. We throwing in audible, audible, audible. Buffalo, buffalo. We throwing in Damien freaking Omaha. We throwing in Damien Dark right now, man. Okay, Legion of Bum Asses. Let's throw him in there. Damien Dark has been getting a free pass for a very long time. Yeah. I like Damien Dark, mm-hmm. and I like I generally like his uh his spirit yeah. on these shows, but like. He has been on three seasons of Hourverse TV and continues to baffle me at every turn. And this week was one of those weeks where I was just like, dude, you know what? This is what you've been doing. You've been trying to do this. So why are you not surprised about how this is turning out? So, yeah. And Citizen Steel getting, letting Kawasa tie him up and all that other stuff. I'm just like, this is dumb. She injects, he, she, he lets her tie him up. She injects him with something so he can't use his powers, apparently. I'm just like, this is dumb. <laughs> it's dumb. We're going we're gonna to get into that more later. We're going to move over to number two. Are we going to talk about the most forgettable character I've seen in a long time? This chick, Athena, on Arrow this week. Like, what? She's, like, leading up the Thanatos Guild or whatever. <laughs> and did, like, Ray, did anyone care about this character this week? Not at all. Talk about villain of the week status. I'm just like, she was mad wooden, mad bland. I was like, <laughs> there was a moment in that episode that had me dying because of how bad mm. the actor it was. Mm. Uh, and I think it was when Thea had uh, the document and she was going to uh, burn it or rip it or something. <laughs> Thea was mad or far away from the fire, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> and Athena's like, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, they okayed this? They couldn't have redone that? <laughs> she was like, don't do that. <laughs> she really was she's like, don't do that. <laughs> I'm like, you're a League of Assassins member. You got a sword. You trying to tell me you're not going to reach Thea quicker than she could throw that in the fire? Thea was also mad far away from that fire, man. Mad far away from that fire. And just Athena was just like, this chick Athena is supposed to be a threat to Nissa Al Ghul, Thea Queen. And the Green Arrow, at the very least. Yeah. And at no point in this episode did I actually feel like she was a viable threat. Like, Thea stabbed her, and <laughs> she, she looks to talk at Nissa. She looks to talk to Nissa for, like, two seconds. And Athena just randomly disappears, and this is like, she's hard to kill. I'm like, <laughs> that's unfortunate, because I wish she was easy to kill so we don't have to see her again. I mean, the, the whole episode, we saw her getting owned. The flashback, yeah. we saw her getting owned. When they first went up against each other, got owned. Got owned. Like, yeah, I yeah. Know, I was just, she looked whack, I, but she has a scar on her face, man. So she must be intimidating, man. She got a face scar, man. Must be, and her name's Athena. Yeah, that's Athena. Name. That's a, that's she's named after a goddess, man. She must be intimidating. But talk about waste of a character, man. I'm just like, and apparently this story thread is probably gonna get picked up at some point. Maybe not this season. Maybe even something that they 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 pick up next season. If I mean. If there is a next season, you know, we don't know yet at the time of recording this. Maybe it's like looking likely, but we don't know. But just Athena, dude, we don't need her. You can have another leader for the Thanatos Guild. Just pick anyone else. Just pick them. Why isn't it Talia Al Ghul? She's a good guy now. That would have worked. That would have <laughs> that would have that would have worked out where like maybe she found the Thanatos Guild, found out about them, and she's like, yo, I'm gonna take them over. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm gonna take over the remnants of the league. Like I found out Merlin had this rogue organization. I'm gonna take it over. That's it. Call it a day. Now you got sister versus sister. It's easily more, like, that much more compelling. There we go. Same as that. But no, we got whack ass Athena over here, you know, stabbing shit, asking people not to burn paper. Anyway, well, number one bum ass this week, Deep Voice. You were talking about her earlier. Speaking of useless villains. 
Talking about a useless village, man. Talking about something that's just a waste. Kuwasa over on Legends of Tomorrow. She died. She dead. And I don't think any one of us cared. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't care. You didn't care. I'm just like, somebody in chat earlier, I think it was Bacha, he was saying that he blames Amaya for Citizen Steel's bum asses, bum assedness. First of all, you're wrong. I have a lot of problems with Amaya, but I would say she's easily a better character than Citizen Steel. Yeah. Like, without a doubt. But her, like, the whole thing with her and Kuwasa, and I, apparently she's going to go back in time to save Kuwasa. I guess her storyline's not over, but I just, I don't really care about Kuwasa. Yeah. There's just something about she's like, oh, you know, I want the, the I want the 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 spirit totem, but I'm gonna help out Mollus and I'm gonna hurt my grandmother, but not hurt my grandmother. And I'm gonna hurt my sister. I want to hurt my sister, but also protect my sister because she's my sister. I'm just like, where do you guys want Kawasa to be? Like, there has to be a line drawn in the sand. She does she just want the spirit totem? That's it. But I'm like, why do you want the spirit totem? You got that? You got the water totem. You're powerful, and I don't think you can own more than one. So it's like. I don't understand what her motivations are. Right? I don't know. The, like, the I just feel like I, I feel like they've like, just been treading water with the character. Like literally. She was better <laughs> in the Vixen animated series. Like she was fine there because they were just like she's straight up villain. She doesn't like she doesn't like uh, you know, uh I'm blanking on Vixen's name right now. She doesn't like present day Vixen because she has a spirit totem. She feels like she should have had a spirit totem. She feels like she deserved it. Clean cut, clean cut, clear cut, fine. The Vixen animated series on the CWC, she was fine. And I was kind of I was kind of excited for them to bring her over to Legends and she's just she's just flat. She's just boring. Yeah. And and the whole thing about her and being left and it's just like it wasn't all that compelling. And then she dies and it's like it's like, "Oh, are you redeemed now? Like, do I care? Does it matter? It's over. Let's move on. Whatever." And, and- Antonio Laguna has kind of put this aptly, and this is sort of a problem with Legends. I like Legends. Like, I've been liking Legends lately, and I still like Legends. I'm still, like, positive about Legends overall lately. I know earlier in the season we were having a lot of trouble with the show. <laughs> but Antonio Laguna, he said, Legends is trying to make us care about trying to be the funniest and goofiest show. And that's kind of true. Like, Legends tonally is, is like, sometimes inconsistent. Sometimes inconsistent. And... When it comes to Kwasa and Amaya, it's like Amaya is this like heavily, overly serious character. Mm-hmm. And, you know, her love interest they're forcing, isn't. Her love interest isn't. And then they're also forcing, like, I still don't understand why she's in love with, with, with him. I still don't get it. Like, to me, like, I didn't see the relationship build. And they haven't really given episodes where it's like they're, like, you know, I guess showing off their rela- the growth of their relationship. They kind of happened off screen in between seasons. You know what I mean? Like, it started off as sort of a lusty thing last season. And then this season, you know, uh, you know, they fell in love, but then he broke her heart. And I'm just like, like, it's as far as I'm concerned, Citizen Steel, next season, he can go. And Vixen, I'm done with, like, the Vixen stuff. Like, unless you're going to bring in present-day Vixen, who was supposed to be in the show, the reason why Mari is not in the show is because the actress who plays her uh, Megalyn Echikunwoke, she actually had a contractual obligation with another show, so that's why they decided to bring in the Amaya version of uh, of um, a Vixen. I'm just like, yo, I'm completely done with Vixen, Kawasa, get them out of there. Unless they're bringing in Mari, that's the only thing I care about. I'm like, she can go. At the end of the season, just take them all out. Just, I'm done with it. Like, I, I don't care anymore. <laughs> like, I didn't care about Kawasa's, like, Kawasa's death meant nothing to me. <laughs> yeah. It was inconsequential to me. And Amaya's like, oh, I'm going to go. I don't give a sh- I don't give a crap. I'm going to go back in time and change this. I'm like, Amaya, you always lecturing people about time. Always. <laughs> and now you're going to go back and do it yourself? I'm just like, just, just kill this. Just kill that storyline already, man. Just end it. Let it be tied up in a bow. I don't want the will they, won't they. Just let it be a situation where they find a loophole. And they get to go back and stay with her in the 1940s or whatever they, they, they want to do and just get them out of here. I'm sorry. I don't know. I agree. I, I don't care about the relationship. Like, to me, it's just another version of the Hawks. Just like, I'm done. I'm completely done. Well, I don't think it's as bad, but it's definitely as useless. No, not, <laughs> no, not even close. Not even close. Like, I, I've liked Amaya at certain points. Yeah. I have. But overall, they just can't find anything to do with her. 
And it kind of goes back to what we were saying. Like, the legends should just, they should just, aside from Sarah Lance, they should just, like, rotate people in and out consistently. You know, like, Zari and Mick had a little side thing this week, and I was just like. <laughs> yeah, that was, I, f- I forgot about that. That was also, like, extremely useless. Like, <laughs> Mick is like, I like food, I like pork. and I don't care about your culture. I was just like, I'm going to be annoying. Like, yeah, and it's just why, like, why is this even a thing? Who cares? <laughs> why is this? Th- why is this a thing? Pork. It's just well, like, I mean, they're not even <laughs> then. Right. Like this side story. That's what and it, it, is, it just makes you like, you know, she's talking about her, her culture, you know, her being Muslim. Yeah. And it's like when you tie it into a, a silly storyline like this, it makes me feel like her culture, like isn't important to the show because like you could use that and put that with a story that's a little bit more like i don't know like akin to i don't know something more that's more positive for her they, something that could they just, progress her character they, they a little just bit but relegate it, everything she does to like character moments like oh look what's going yeah. on in the ship while dangerous things are all going on outside did you know zari yeah. plays video games every time they did show you know her, zari she's with a controller in her hand Right. And then, did, did you know that it's Ramadan now? Like, and I'm like, that's, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with her being, you know, Muslim. I think that's great. I think that's a cool thing that makes her unique. But you're throwing it out there and you're making it not matter. It doesn't matter to By the not having it, it mean something. The plot, there's no point in even like right. mentioning it. It's like, why? right. Why? Like, it literally right. served. Th- those scenes served no purpose but to waste time. Like, it was just, we got to no. put something in here. So, Mick likes to eat pork, and Zara's Muslim, she doesn't eat pork. So, what's the point of this? And he's like, I don't care that you don't eat pork. I'm still going to offer you a burger with bacon. You know, I'm just like, uh, like I said, keep Sarah, Constantine, you know, if they get another season next season, Constantine staying, keep Constantine. Everybody else can go. Even Wally West. Because at this point, <laughs> Wally West is like, <laughs> oh my god! I don't know if it's the, I don't know. Uh, apparently, uh, you know, Keenan Keenan Lonsdale, he's a good actor. You know, he he started a movie. I can't remember the name of the movie right now. Love, I feel Love like Simon or something like that. I think it's something like Love Simon. You know what I mean? And apparently, he was great in that movie. And it is called Love Simon. And apparently, he's he's great in that movie. So I'm like, all right. It's may it's probably not his acting ability. Maybe it's the writing, but something has to be done with Wally West, man. Wally West is so dry. Like every time he makes a joke or tries to make a joke, it falls so flat, dude. It's like you could literally hear a pin in the room drop, yo. Like when he was like messing around with something, like when he was with Kawasa and and and, and Citizen Bumass, he was swinging something around and he like knocked over some like boxes mm-hmm. and stuff. And it was just like he didn't have like the silliness of like. Like, let's say Wally West from Young Justice to pull it off. And it wasn't like, you know, he tried to play it off so that you could la- laugh at it further. Just like, oh, by the way, I'm a doofus and I knocked something over. Uh. I'm like, maybe he just doesn't like, maybe he's just not into the role. I don't know what it is, but I don't know. Yeah. I mean, he's. he's... I would even take Ava on the team. To, like, put Ava on the team. <laughs> and, <laughs> and everybody else can. Oh, yeah. Ray could stay too. Ray could stay too. Ray's always been a favorite of mine. Yeah. Ray could definitely stay. So everybody else can go. <laughs> everybody else can go. Ray Red Ray definitely needs needs more time on him. Yes, uh, I agree. Sarah Lance, Ray, Constantine, uh, everyone else could pretty much kick the bucket. I mean, I, I, yeah. <laughs> you, you can have Heat Wave just being a grumpy old dude just on the ship. Like I don't even want Heat Wave because at this point he just takes away screen time. Yeah, what, Heat Wave has been treading water for a very long time now. Listen, he's there a, who, 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 a very long who's time. Who's going to be there to have scenes where, you know, they're eating? <laughs> <laughs> we need somebody to stuff that to stuff their face, man, cuz you know, <laughs> the legends are human. We have to rem- we have to be reminded yeah. that they need sustenance. And, and you know, I mean? Matt V in the chat mentioned Gary, which is he did not make the list, but he is he is a bum ass, trust me. Uh, he <laughs> is most definitely a bum ass. And he, this this episode solidified it because as soon as he was on, yes. there, I'm like, I, I I forget that this guy is on the show and he annoys me every <laughs> like you know that little Men in Black thing they keep using. 
Yeah. I must use that on myself whenever Gary is in an episode. <laughs> because it was just like, wow, I really don't like this character. And I can't believe that yeah. I forgot that I don't like this character. <laughs> you know, you know, Gary not being on the bum ass list, uh, and he's 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 missed it every week for, for some he's reason. He's not important. Him be him, right. And him being on the bum ass list, and a lot of people aren't that we put on bum ass list aren't important. Yeah. But he's so bad that we'd rather ignore him. That's what it is. Like Gary is like, you know, if, if I were gonna less if I was gonna if you were gonna list your bed your best friends, right? And say one of your best friends passed away, you know, God forbid, right? You are listing your best friends. Gary is the best friend that passed away. It's like you're not listing him, but you know he was your best friend at some point. Like Gary, we're not listing him, but you know he's a bum ass. <laughs> like he's a bum ass in spirit always, bro. Uh-huh. Like he's a bum ass in our hearts always. Cause Gary is Especially with like the tone of the show, I know they try to be wacky a little bit, but like he's just like like Family Matters, like TV sitcom wacky. He's so bad, like he's really bad. I'm just like, nah, they they need to get rid of Gary. I agree, Gary's whack, bro. Gary is terrible, <laughs> and he's just like, oh, oh my gosh, I'm so scared of everything. I don't know what I'm gonna do about life, and oh, oh. that's literally him every episode. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'm going to fumble over myself. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing right now. I'm so scared. I'm just like, can we get this guy, Gary, a wet nap and get him off the show? I'm sick of this dude, man. Yeah. He's... Damn. We don't even have a, some your Predator Mag is like, show us a picture of Gary, boys. We don't even got a picture of Gary because we never, <laughs> we never, we never sent us, yo, let's get a picture of Gary for, for the weekly one shot, for the DCTV weekly one shot. We don't even care. Uh, uh, <laughs> Gary, Gary. Uh, I'll indulge. The worst thing we, the best thing we got for Gary, the closest he got to actually being featured is when we showed the Bebo socks last week. Oh god, that's a deadly combo right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, it's like a, a nexus of bomassery <laughs> with combining Gary and Bebo together. There you go. That's like a, a that's like a bum ass sandwich. <laughs> And I think it's like a bum ass that, soup. It's like bum ass cereal. It's a bum ass sandwich, and Rory ate it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, man, we had to slander some bum asses this this week, man. Let's let's wrap things up, man. The one's gotta go for this week. Which episode has simply gotta go for you this week? Deep boys, talk to me. Let's talk this out, it, man. It's it's gotta be this episode of Arrow. It, it, it's yeah, gotta be the, the Thanatos Guild. Ah, oh, man, was that dry? That that was dry. the definition of dry. That episode, <laughs> I could not believe. <laughs> I could not believe how little I cared about this episode. It was insane. I this episode of I'm no, sorry, go man. ahead, go I'm ahead. Sorry, go it ahead. was just I, I'm I'm like I'm I'm running out of adjectives in my head. Like I can't. They're all jumbling. Like. All over the place because I can't decide. Flabbergasted, astounded, uh, uh, just just floored at how bland. This like ep- it's not even it's not even a terrible episode. Like Flash gives me terrible episodes, right? Yeah. And and yeah. sometimes you get really good episodes from some of these other shows. Arrow was one of them, but this is like yeah. as mid as possible. <laughs> this is as <laughs> neutral as middle of an episode I have ever seen, or I've seen in a yeah. long time. Yeah. It just happened. Like that, it's one of those things that makes me think to myself, I, I wish I could get that hour back uh, back of my life. Yeah. I'm not sure there's ever been an episode of any hour of a show. Scratch that. I don't think there's ever <laughs> been an episode of Arrow where I've just literally just looked at my phone for a majority of it just going in between in between my phone and watching the show like i the, the yeah. best analogy i can give for it is like it was like old pizza <laughs> like pizza has all the right ingredients for you to love it right it's got cheese tomato you know nice crust you know pe- some toppings maybe and this is what this episode was it had all the right ingredients that everything that like long time our fans have wanted to see for a long time like it had rory harper back it had nissa al ghul back you know thea back in the suit like all the characters that people have been annoyed with, like Wild Dog, wasn't there was nowhere to be seen on this episode. <laughs> Curtis and Dinah, they were on the episode, but they weren't in costume. Like, it was 
it was the right mix, but it was like old pizza. It's like when you it's like when pizza gets super stale and you throw it in a microwave and then it comes out and it's just like a, a, a pizza cracker. It just comes out bland because like, damn, this is this pizza was good like seasons ago. <laughs> this episode was arrow. These all these ingredients made a great pizza seasons ago, but today, eating this pizza, it tastes whack. It tastes bland. It tastes old and, and decrepit. And I'm just like, that was just really lackluster, dude. It was lackluster, man. That was a really bad. Like, Supergirl sometimes bad, but like, I feel like on, <laughs> I feel like with Arrow, I sort of expect more because I think Arrow is the first of all. Arrow is the show that started it all. That's the, that's number one, and two, Arrow general generally has the right ingredients, but this time it's just I don't know. It's 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 not good. That wasn't good. And Arrow's been lost, a little lost. They start off the season well, and Arrow to me was as dope as it's ever been for a bit. And then something just happened. Like I think we just had a point where we're just like, this is bad, man. Yeah. Like it, it, it's it's I wouldn't even say it's bad. It's just lackluster. It has no punch to it. Yeah. It has no punch to it. And and it's largely like I don't know when these Arrowverse writers are gonna learn, like, keeping your villain off of the show hasn't generally worked out for you guys. You got to keep the villain around in some capacity. You got to keep him around some way, build him up. I don't know. Got to say the These shows can of the villain of what they're doing out there. They they find they consistently find a way to just bore. Like I mean, the thinker over on the Flash. Good lord, man! Oh, like I was telling you guys last week, the reason that makes the totems, the reason why the totems are sort of interesting for Legends is because. It's sort of like a rat race for the objects. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a race to see who can get their hands on the objects. The average objects are changing hands. It's interesting. The thing about the bus matters is they're actually people, but the people are bland and boring. Yeah. So it's like you don't they 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 waste time establishing these characters, setting up these characters, but they're essentially like the equivalent of a villain of the week, even if they're not necessarily the villain. It's like they they give them an episode and you don't really care. And them getting rid of Neil Sandilands was like the beginning of the downfall for the Flash and, and the whole Thinker run. Neil Sandilands as a Thinker was the best thing for the was the best thing for that show. And every week they're like, "Oh yeah, by the way, no sign of the Thinker." But what about the bus matters? And I'm just like, enough already. Like this season of the Flash, just put it in the toilet. <laughs> put it in the toilet. Put put the season of the Flash in the toilet, man. Like I don't know if I like any Arrowverse show a lot this this year. Legends, as so right now, Legends is number one. But Legends started off season three terribly. Yeah. <laughs> the beginning of the beginning of Legends, I was like, and it got ironically, it got better after Crisis on on Earth X. That's when I think it started picking up. And they got there's competition out there, which is the other thing. There are other shows on other networks. Yeah, Agents of Shield, great show. The Gifted, that was a great show. Runaways, it was better. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. You know, and I, that's why I think we're even sticking with Krypton because I think we're just, <laughs> we've been saying it for a while. The Arrowverse has felt stale. We've been meaning to like talk about that in the video. Yeah. And, you know, the Arrowverse, I think we're kind of just waiting for the end of the season to sort of digest everything with the Arrowverse. But like when people, people, I used to tell people when they're like, oh, what about these shows on the CW? I used to tell people, do yourself a favor and watch it. Now I tell people like, only jump in if you got nothing else to watch. Because when you look at the Arrowverse, like I'll be honest with you, it's not great TV. It's not great TV. Like, I watch the Arrowverse because I'm like, I like superhero shows. Yeah. And I want to see superhero adaptations, and this is the only thing I got. And we want to talk about it. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I want to talk about it, right. But I'm like, the Arrowverse has not been great. Black Lightning, Breath of Fresh, Fresh Air this Breath of Fresh Air this year. Yes, I'm a little bit concerned about the villain status, but I think Jefferson, I think the acting is probably the best of all the Arrowverse shows. I think the acting is probably the best. Other also in terms of acting, Supergirl may not have the best storylines, but they got good actors and actresses. I'll tell you that much, with the exception of Jimmy Olsen. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, tell me you don't like your boy Jimmy Olsen and his V necks? <laughs> nah, I, I'm just I'm just playing. I think I think the guy who plays Jimmy Olsen is actually a, a Macad Burks. I think he's actually a good actor. It's just they don't give him anything to do. He's uh. Guardian. 
Nah, it took me a moment to pick that one up. <laughs> yeah. I thought through my whole like ro- Rolodex of black superheroes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. And Guardian's not even traditionally black. Yeah, I mean, somebody saying, asking me in the chat, your Guardian's not traditionally black. You're, you're right. Although Mal Duncan has had like the Guardian role in Young Justice, I guess. The, yeah, he's black. But but uh, DB2193 uh, asked, you know, he asked me like, even Cyborg Superman. Cyborg Superman. Cyborg Superman. What are you doing standing on that roof? It's because I'm Cyborg Superman. <laughs> <laughs> David Harewood is a, is a good actor. Okay. He's a, David Harewood is a, a good actor. Dude. But they wasted him. Uh, yeah. They, and they even wasted, they wasted uh, freaking him. Martian Manhunter. Like one of the dopest DC characters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That one hurts a lot. I can't. Martian Man. I want. You know what I want them to do? I want to take I want them to take all the disenfranchised characters that have been on the Arrowverse and put them in a show together. <laughs> and just name the show the Outsiders. Just take the name the Outsiders and just put because they're the Outsiders, man. You could nope. take take Martian Manhunter that would, from Supergirl. That would probably be a dope show though. Yeah, I'm t- I'm saying take Martian Manhunter from Supergirl. I was gonna say take Jimmy Olsen, but take Martian Manhunter, <laughs> um Cisco. Cisco, oh man, Cisco is just grumpy. <laughs> I can't find a thinker. Like he, what is Cisco doing in Flash? He's like, oh, by the way, I have another great name. I'm like, all right, Cisco, these are getting a little bit kind of corny, man. <laughs> melting pot. <laughs> I'm going. I've got a villain, melting pot. I'm just like Cisco, man. It's like because he's he's you need he's something to do. The DC encyclopedia names. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we got. He's like, it just hit me, melting pot. <laughs> so we got Martian Manhunter, Cisco. We'll throw Win in there. He's the man on the computer. Okay, we can have Win on the computer. I'll take that because I feel like he's criminally underused on Supergirl. Because Supergirl used to be like, oh, Win is Supergirl's best friend, and now it's like, oh, Lena Luthor, I just met you two days ago, but you're my bestie. <laughs> Wing got Samantha, home. I just met you an hour ago, but you're my bestie. <laughs> I'm like. Uh, I'm like, my man Wing got left out in the freaking rain, we're man. We're throwing in OG Jay Garrick. <laughs> OG, <laughs> OG Jay Garrick, man. Great actor. Let's throw in, I, I agree. Let's throw in OG Jay Garrick in there. And even though she's not being misused, and, we're throwing Sarah Lance in there. Let's throw Sarah Lance in there because she's great on Legends, but I would be down for that. I'd be down for Sarah Lance in there. That's a dope team right oh, there. I mean, we, who else we could throw that's in That's a there? dope team. That's let, let's see who we get from Arrow. We need to throw somebody in there. We need to throw somebody in there from Arrow. From Arrow, uh, that's been underused. Roy Harper. Yeah, like throw Roy Harper. It, think about Roy Harper is I don't even know if he wants to be in Arrowverse. But this is our. our I feel like he's trying. This to, is our fantasy show though. So <laughs> okay, if, if we talk a fantasy show, Roy Harper. I, I would even say some blasphemous and say Diggle. Oh, there we go. Yeah, no, Diggle. I would take Diggle off of Arrow. That's a little blasphemous for some people. No, I, but I would take Diggle I, I, I'll off. I'll say Diggle, yeah. I would take Diggle off Arrow, and I would give him some other identity other than Spartan. By the way, I wonder if they're going to go with Red Arrow for his pers- his his new identity uh, on, on Arrow. I feel like they're teasing he, something else He for wants him. to be an Arrow, because that next episode, he's tight. He punched. Yeah, <laughs> he clotheslined Oliver through like, a, a display glass. He's like, "You've been leading me on. I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna throw you through some glass, Oliver." <laughs> I was like, "That that the way they cut that trailer for the next episode." I was like, "I'm not quite." I was like, "Something's missing here." <laughs> Digger's like, "Yo, who ate my food in the fridge?" And then next thing you know, Oliver's going through like a glass case. I told you not to eat my my Reuben. <laughs> I told you not to eat my sandwich. <laughs> my man Diggles, you've been leading me on. Bam, throws my man through some glass. I'm like, something about that trailer yeah. was whack. Diggles' costume also does suck. Predator Magnus is correct. Yeah. The Spartan costume, they're like, hey, well, let's let's throw a little red in there. <laughs> I'm like, this costume sucks, man. I was like, my man looks like he's about to go into like a a dominatrix <laughs> motocross party. <laughs> my man's got a helmet. He's got the leather. I'm like, nah. I want to see them. I see, I want to see them maybe because Thea's gone now. Roy Harper's gone, and I don't sure if she took the costume with her. But I feel like the Red Arrow identity is wide open. I mean, he's gonna need a new one because Thea's costume's not gonna fit him. <laughs> I mean, it's strings, baby. All he got to do is just pull the strings out, man. You know what look, I'm saying? It's strings. They got legs like over a tiny here, little man. Little corset on him. 
<laughs> it's gonna be from right here, right under, under his nipples, to the top of his belly button. That's that's as much as that'll cover him with that costume. I mean, uh, uh, David Ramsey has actually said that he's he's ripped Green Arrow suits. Like when every time he's worn the Green Arrow suit, he said he's he's like he's ripped like some of the suits. So, like, when he was the Green Arrow, he wasn't wearing Oliver's suit. Like, they had to make him a new one. He was making, wearing Stephen Amell's suit. They had to make him a new one. But I feel like they're teasing a new identity for him. He wants to be an Arrow. And the only thing I think of that hasn't been used is Red Arrow. That's the only thing I can think of. I'd be down. So That's way better than whatever. I'd be down for that. Now. Spartan. Yes. Spartan is trash, dude. Let's be Spartan. honest. Come on. Is that even Spartan a Spartan is trash, dude. My, my whole thing, Spartan was made up for the show. That's mm-hmm. one. Two, which is which is fine. Like I'm not against making up something for a show. You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, Diggle's made it, up. It could be he it, made his way into the comics. Yeah, Diggle is a prominent character in the comics, right? He's one of Oliver's, you know, uh, best friends in the comics. But I think the Spartan. My thing about the disconnect between Spartan is that he's Spartan and he's like a big hulking character. I think he's like a bigger character and idea. He's supposed to be is that he's supposed to be a bruiser. But I'm like, my man wields the, the smallest pistol. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't, like, I feel like there's a disconnect between Spartan and a guy who's like, essentially, pew, 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 pew. <laughs> like, there's something off there. Like, at least give him like a, like a, a spear or something. <laughs> <laughs> or a shield. That's what, this is, listen, this goes back to my whole original thing. That Diggle should have been Guardian. Yeah. Remember I told you that? Like, years ago, I said Diggle should be Guardian. I agree. So, wide open identity. Diggle should be Guardian. But nah, Jimmy Olsen. Because we needed that. We need Jimmy Olsen, guys. Everybody needs Jimmy Olsen to be in a suit. I guess Jimmy Olsen was rocking those V-necks a lot better. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> these guys were like, yeah, we got to give this guy something to do. <laughs> Deep boys, what's your one that's got to stay this week, man? What's your best episode this week, man? Uh, I'm going with uh, Black Lightning on this one. Uh, Black Lightning, yeah, okay. Episode Sins of the Father, colon, The Book of mm. Redemption. Mm. Uh, that was that was a solid episode, honestly. You know, it was like you said, it was, yeah. you know, the, the acting's pretty good. I mean, the, the stakes are pretty high. I do agree with the villain issue, uh, for yes. sure. Yes, but they were able to kind of, you know, make it by on this episode because they definitely had some dope team up between uh, Black Lightning and his daughter Thunder. Thunder, um, you know, interesting f- that ass, dope. <laughs> interesting family uh, uh, issues going on there, and then having to leave, and then the ASA kind of getting up on them, and Gambi getting beat up, and then the twist at the end with the vice principal. I was like, wow, that was interesting. That was dope. I like that. Black Lightning, I feel like I take it for granted a little bit because I enjoy it when I watch it, but I feel like I'm just so sour in the hourverse that like I, I I focus on the negative a little bit too much sometimes. Mm-hmm. So Black Lightning is my one that's got to stay this week also. Um, I think I, Ava was a good episode too for on Legends yeah. Tomorrow, um, but the Kawasa storyline, trash, Damien Dark, trash, Sin Steel, trash, Gary, trash. I'm just like, there's too much, there's too much fat mm-hmm. here. Zari. Zari and Mick's storyline. Hey, I don't eat bacon. Hey, you want some bacon? Trash. Get that out of here. Legends of Tomorrow, you know, didn't hold the, hold a candle to this. Krypton is still trying to find its yeah. footing. Like, I think that Krypton is waiting to have that breakout episode. Um, and I think they're painting some cool dynamics there. And it, it could. It could end up being that way. Um, but Black Lightning, to me, I think it is really good. Um Terry Baker, I knew this was going to be an issue that comes up, and I want to acknowledge this. He says, the problem started the problem started when Andrew Kreisberg was fired, and they relied on him for a few of the show's main storylines, and they had to replace him because he hadn't planned out the season before being fired. False. That, to me, is as false as it gets, because the idea that Andrew Kreisberg, like, these shows are, when Andrew Kreisberg got fired, these shows are way further along, further along than you realize with him getting fired. These seasons were having problems way before Andrew Kreisberg got fired. Like, it's just it's just a simple fact. And then when you consider that he was fired, like, the shows are further along in filming and planning. Yeah. So I don't think that this is an Andrew Kreisberg problem at all. I don't think so. We could talk about that next season, but not now. I, I know that there's some people who think mm-hmm. that, but I just, just the way they plan shows out, the way that works, I do not think Andrew Kreisberg is the reason for this. Because Andrew Kreisberg really wasn't running all the shows. He really wasn't. 
he had his hands in like two of them, maybe, maybe three, and like you know, maybe Godfathering, but he wasn't like they have a a, a nice uh, they have a lot of uh, of people available. You know what I'm saying? It's not like Andrew Kreisberg was the one dude he walked off and it was over. You know yeah. what I mean? So, I mean, I don't know what your take on it. Is. I don't know. Honestly, from my end, it's a little difficult to say because uh, I wasn't really aware of, like, I don't have no idea how much input he has or how much he affects the shows or what's going on. Yeah. Um, I, I do think there'll be <coughs> some me. sort of change or some sort of effect. Uh, but I think <coughs> when this happened, these seasons, like you said, were already halfway through or they were already, you know, moving forward. Uh, so yeah. I guess the real change we'll see is next season with the shows. Yeah, I think next season when you see the planning and what went into it, I think that's when... Because you got to understand, like, for example, like, yeah, he was involved with The Flash, you know, and, and Arrow and Supergirl and Legends of Tomorrow to a certain extent. He was like a co-developer. But on Legends of Tomorrow, like, I'm looking at, you know, some of his credits. On Legends of Tomorrow, he's only credited as a co-developer and writer for two episodes. For Supergirl, he's a co-developer and writer for five episodes. For Arrow, co-developer and writer for 17 episodes. 17 episodes is... I don't even know if we're even on episode 17 for Arrow. We may be. Yeah. But 17 episodes is a good chunk of the season. And for Flash, he's co-developer and writer for 10 episodes. Maybe you could argue the Flash. Maybe. Because, you know, the Flash started getting stale right around that point. But I would even argue that the seasons were mapped out before. These seasons are mapped out before they start. You know what I'm saying? For the most part. So, like, this is not an Andrew Kreisberg uh, problem. I don't really, I genuinely do not believe that. I really don't. I really don't believe that. Um, and, like, I, I've been waiting for somebody to sort of bring that up because I think it's, I think it's a worthwhile topic to explore. You know what I'm saying? I'm, you know, I don't want to make it seem like that was a, a bad take. But, I, you know, I, I, I'm, I was eager to address that. But, you know, obviously with the allegations against, you know, Andrew Kreisberg, you know, I don't, I didn't want to bring him up unnecessarily because, you know, uh, there's no place for for disrespecting anyone in the workplace and and being inappropriate. Case closed. So you know that's what I'll say on that. Yeah, I agree. But but yeah, man. Uh, but uh, any final words before we wrap this episode of the uh, the weekly one shot up, man? Any thoughts? Uh, well, I guess someone mentioned. Did we hear about Sarah returning for the Arrow finale? Yes. Uh, yeah, we read that. Yeah. Um, we'll we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens and what that means. And, and I'm assuming what the connection is, is, is maybe Nander Parbat kind of a reference or importance or the league gets kind of brought back in. I don't know what, why mm. else would they have her there. Uh, yeah. Or maybe it's like Earth 2 Sarah Lynch or something. I don't know. But there, there's really, maybe on my end of things, I don't know if there's really much to say. Uh, but she, she's always a good addition, always good to have on any of the shows. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> some people are sort of wondering if there's going to be some sort of birds of prey thing going on, which is something Arrow has teased for a very long time. I'll tell you right now, with one possible thing that came to mind is the whole idea of the Lazarus Pit and people maybe vying for the Lazarus Pit. Um, maybe somebody wants to bring back Sarah, uh, Laurel Lance, and maybe that's why she pops up. Maybe the, maybe the Lazarus Pit thing will come back into play. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's a long-term thing, but I'm, I'm really, I mean, I love Sarah Lance and I, I was really sad when she left Arrow. Like, I still think that she's the superior Lance as I call her. <laughs> I think that she's the best Lance character. I think that she was the best Black Canary. I wish they would have just said, all right, let's send her over to, 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 uh, to, um, what's the, what's the flash of city? I'm Central. Like, like Central yeah. city. Right. During the particle accelerator explosion, give her some screaming powers and call it a day. But no, the Arrowverse wanted to be super duper complicated with how they did Black Canary to the point where that there's essentially been four Black Canaries in the whole show. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. It's been four Black Canaries, basically. Sarah Lance, uh, Dinah Drake, Laura Lance, and Black Siren is pretty much an alternate version of Black Canary. They just can't get that character right. And she's crucial to Green Arrow lore, but that's a whole nother conversation for another day. I always get frustrated <laughs> when I think about like what they've done to to to, to Black Canary. It's disrespectful. It's kind of whack. I mean, I, I guess I don't know. It, it's like you said, it's a discussion for another day. It's hard yep. to say. I guess they just had different intentions, and they had the Laurel character, and they wanted to make it something different. And then for them to kind of yeah. reach some point that intersects with 
what you usually see uh, Black Canary as, uh, you know, it went. It was a bumpy road along the way. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, guys, thank you for tuning in to this edition of the DC TV Weekly One Shot. Thank you guys for the support. Thank you guys for coming out to live stream and, and commenting. Thank you to everybody who's watching this as a video and commenting and, and engaging in chat with us. Um, as I said before, the Spectacular Spoiler League, you know, me and Boyce have been going through um, some personal things that sort of taken us away from the channel. But we hope to be coming back and, and doing new stuff with you guys. And, you know, it's just an adjustment period for us. But I'm really, 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 really thankful and glad that, you know, people, people have stuck around. Um, that being said, man, if you like anything you've heard today, please drop a like on the video. We would greatly appreciate a like. Um, you know, help word get out there on the video, help us recruit more leads to the cause. You know, that's, <laughs> that's why we do this. We want this community to grow and we want people to join the dope community. We already got in a hall of spoilers, man. If you haven't already hit the subscribe button so you could be up to date with the latest and greatest coming from the spectacular spoiler league and turn on that notifications, uh, the notifications by hitting that little bell icon. So, you know, you could be aware when we go live and we drop videos, man. But, uh, Anyway, Deep Boys and I are signing out, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out. Peace.